today, the most value is in agility and productivity. How fast can you build your apps? How fast can you get to market? How fast can you change them? And that's really all about developer productivity. And so that's what we focus on as an application platform. So what we do basically is we allow uh, a customer or a developer to push application code to us, which we then run. Uh, that's pretty much the, the basic premise. Uh, however, we do this in a dramatically different way than uh, traditional hosting or even a normal cloud infrastructure offering. So instead of thinking about servers as the individual units, how many servers, how many virtual servers, how many instances do I need, how do I configure them, how do they communicate, we completely abstract servers away. So you don't, there's no such thing as a server on our platform. There's even a file system. Uh, it's really just your code and you push that code to us and then we manage all the processes. We run all of your web front end processes, which we call dynos. Um, they're all behind uh, really uh, powerful HTTP cache. So you get a lot of benefit right out of the box if you set proper caching headers. Uh, we run the, the database as a service. We run a few ourselves and we have third parties that you can use. Uh, and then we also run background workers who do a lot of asynchronous work, which is a very uh, common pattern in web applications these days. So we sort of support all the basic architecture. And it's really sort of, uh, I would say, three parts. Uh, one is the part that faces the developer, right? And that's sort of where we come from. That's, that's what we focus on, what we think about, uh, is really the developer experience. As a company, we're, we're sort of maniacally focused on that. We want the developer experience to be very, very smooth and easy and, and productive. Uh, so that's really the first thing. There's a lot of tooling and a lot of process and workflow that we really focus on. Uh, and even simple things like the aesthetics of the API, we try to make very appealing and easy for developers. So that's, that's number one. Number two is this whole application runtime that we provide. Um, and, and this is how you're able to just upload your code and not think about all the underlying architecture, all the different server instances needed to provide the different components. We handle all that in a very scalable, highly maintainable, multi-tenant fashion. Uh, and what that means is that from an operations standpoint, to scale your app, manage your app, you really just have some knobs. You know, do I need more web processes? Do I need more background processes? Do I need to turn on memcache? Do I need another database? Do I need to scale up the database? These are all just sort of knobs and buttons you, you can click or, or one command from a command line. Uh, rather than any kind of provisioning or, or configuration. Uh, and then the third, the third component that we think is really important is the cloud services ecosystem, which is growing very, very quickly. So we provide something we call add-ons. Uh, and add-ons are basically a way for our customers or developers to consume a third-party service from within our platform. And there are a plethora of third-party services and this sort of explosion, even over the last six months, has been really incredible. Uh, and cloud services can be anything. So they're everything from low-level services like databases, you know, uh, SQL as a service, or even a lot of NoSQL stuff. So there's Mongo HQ and there's Couch.io and Cloudent and, and all that. And then there's stuff like Memcache from Northscale. Um, and there's uh, then there's sort of higher-level services like uh, New Relic uh, is a popular company in the Rails world for performance management. Uh, there's SSL, there's email, there's DNS, there's everything you can imagine. Um, and these are all sort of cloud services that you can tie into your Heroku app with one click. And my co-founders and I have spent many a night crawling around the floor of a data center with a screwdriver. I mean, that's that's what you had to used to do. You had to do that. You had to buy the hardware. You had to you know deal with it with a screwdriver, and you had to install the operating system and all the packages and the whole stack and manage the configuration every time you scaled and write the application on top of that. And now. Um, through sort of a, a stacked tier of abstraction layers. You know, there's infrastructure as a service, and then there's us. Now the developer is just thinking about the application code and none of that other stuff, which is really a, it's, it's a big deal in terms of sort of macroeconomic forces, right? It allows people to build just so many more applications.